In Jesus the Christ, dear fellow redeemed, God's grace, mercy, and peace are yours through the shedding of his blood. Amen. Today I want to start out giving you a little bit of context before we, we read our text. At this time, the time of our text, Paul was determined to get to Jerusalem. As he was traveling back there, wherever he went, people were warning him about what waited for him in Jerusalem. But he was determined. He was determined to go to Jerusalem, even to die if necessary. And so as he's taking a ship back down to Jerusalem, not that he sailed to Jerusalem, back down to Israel, He decided to go past Ephesus because he didn't want to spend a lot of time in Ephesus. Paul had a lot of connections with people in Ephesus. He had spent almost three years there serving. And it's the longest time that we know of that he stayed serving in any one place. And in that three years, obviously, he developed very close relationships and ties with the the pastors and the members of the congregation there. So you can imagine that if he was in a rush, he's going to skip Ephesus, and he went just a little bit bit south to a, a place called Miletus. And once he got there, he sent word to the elders of Ephesus to come to him in Miletus. In his conversation with those elders, he told them, I know that none of you will ever see my face again. Paul knew that this conversation with them was going to be the last earthly conversation that he had with them. So maybe you can put yourself into his shoes and their shoes. I don't know if if you've ever had the experience of someone saying goodbye to you in death. Maybe a grandparent. Maybe... Some of us here are a parent. If you were in that situation today, someone that you loved dearly was telling you, you're never going to see me again. These are the last words that I'm going to say to you. You can imagine how much weight those words would have for you. That's the weight that we need to put on the words of our text today. We read in Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 31. Always keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves who will not spare the flock will come in among you. Even from your own group, men will rise up, twisting the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, be always on the alert. Remember, That for three years, night and day, I never stopped warning each one of you with tears. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, these are your words. Sanctify us through the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. So we get the context. Paul was leaving. This was the last time he was going to speak to them. We can often have, have fears over allowing someone else to take over, let's say, a project or something. It's probably similar to parents being able to relinquish 
the future of their children to their own hands. And maybe even the elders in Ephesus were also wondering, what are we going to do? Paul's leaving and he's never coming back. Paul had great words of comfort for those pastors of Ephesus, those overseers. He told them that their position in the church was not by human arrangement. They hadn't maneuvered to get into this position of leadership. No, God, the Holy Spirit, had placed them as shepherds of those flocks. Paul wasn't leaving the church in Ephesus to their own devices. God was in control. Now, we could take a step back further and and look at the church in a broader sense than just here in Ephesus. Wouldn't it have been better for our risen Lord Jesus Christ to stay here on earth instead of ascending into heaven? Wouldn't it have been better if he was the pastor of the church on earth? Well, we could play that game all day. The reality is that Christ has ascended into heaven. Our risen Lord is now ruling from heaven over his church on earth. But he hasn't left the church without leaders, without shepherds. No, he has sent his spirit to call men to lead the church and shepherd the church in this way. We then should view our pastors in a very different light than we view every other vocation. Because God has actively placed them over us to care for us. And the church needs care. Notice Paul warned the Ephesians... Wolves are going to come in among you. And maybe even more startling than that. They're not going to come just from the outside. They're also going to come from the inside. Some of the men in your own midst are going to rise up and lead sheep away to follow after them. And they're going to be wolves who do not care for the sheep, but as wolves do, they will kill the sheep. And so the church is in constant danger from without and from within. The wolves are the false teachers. So we need shepherds to protect us from these wolves. Shepherds who are going to lead us in the truth of God's word. Whatever God's word says, that's what they're going to say. And that's how you can test them. You should not really take any word that I say just on the basis of the fact that I said it. You should be testing every word that you hear your pastors declare to make sure that they're telling you the truth. You don't have to study church history or even the contemporary church very long to see that just because someone bears the title pastor does not mean that they are telling you the truth of God's word. So you have a responsibility to test what your shepherds say to you so that you can know that they're teaching you the truth. Sometimes shepherds, false shepherds I should say, 
they water down God's word. They let you think that what you're doing isn't really a sin. And they'll twist and they'll change God's word so that you actually believe it and you will chase after that sin. What effect is that going to have on your faith? They may appear like a sheep, but they're a wolf. And they're probably killing you from the inside out. So be careful about what your shepherds teach you about right and wrong. Is it what God's word says? Or is it their own idea? And then the greatest truth that God's word proclaims is the forgiveness of sins in Jesus. Not by works or merit, at least not ours, but purely the works and merits of Jesus Christ. You want your pastors to declare to you the unconditional forgiveness of all of your sins. If any pastor mixes in good works there, all you got to do is this. He is taking your faith away from Jesus. When your guilty conscience rises up and, and you see how far you've fallen short from God, what God demands when you look into the mirror of his law, there is no comfort looking back into that mirror. And any pastor that directs you back into that mirror for your comfort is a false shepherd. No, God wants you to turn your eyes from what you see in the mirror to what you see on the cross and in the empty tomb. There you find true peace. There you find the payment necessary to satisfy a righteous God over the things that you have said and done. There you find forgiveness. The day is coming when the pastors that you know will have to hand over the leadership of the church to others. We have nothing to fear. God is still active in his church. God the Holy Spirit call, calling men to shepherd and oversee the church of God. May we test them by the truth of God's word. And when they speak the truth, may we believe and take to heart all that they say, especially that our sins are forgiven. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for prayer. This morning we've been asked to say a prayer for the mother of Elizabeth Sizek, uh, who died of cancer this, this past week. We'll be praying for the family. Okay, let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you on behalf of your child Elizabeth and the members of her family. Comfort them with your grace in this time of loss. We thank you for the wonderful blessing you brought into Elizabeth's life through the life of her mother. Grant her blessed memories and give her confidence in your promises of the reunion of all your saints in heaven. We ask it all in Christ's saving name. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.